Well, so today we are looking at antibiotics that affect the cell envelope. So today we are looking at sterilization as well. So sterilization refers to killing or removal of all bacteria in a non-selective fashion. For example, autocleaving involves heating liquids such as media or solids to 121 degrees under steam pressure. The materials must be heat resistant. Ethylene oxide is sometimes used in hospitals for equipment that cannot be heated. Membrane filters have pores that trap bacteria, but these allow drugs and small chemicals to pass through. So therefore, pre-sterilized filters can be used to sterilize delicate solutions. Violet light is used for decreasing bacterial levels on surfaces such as in operating rooms. However, it is not totally effective. Ionizing radiation is more efficient, but can be used for sterilizing instruments and food. Disinfectants that are phenol-based can be useful in killing many bacteria on certain instruments, but it cannot be used for internal consumption or on skin. Antiseptics such as iodine or 70% alcohol are used topically on skin surfaces to reduce bacterial load. Now that we are understood about the sterilization, let's look into, into today's topic, which is antibiotics. So antibiotics are agents that selectively that are selectively toxic for bacteria, which either kill them and known as bactericidal, or inhibit their growth, which is known as bacterial static, without harm to the patient. These can be ingested, and these compounds have to act on structures found in bacteria, but not in the host. They work most efficiently in conjunction with an active immune system to kill infecting bacteria in the host. After isolation of pure colonies, the susceptibility of bacterial isolates can be tested to a variety of antibiotics. The minimal inhibiting concentration, MIC, refers to the lowest concentration of antibiotic that stops visible growth. The zone of inhibition around a desk impregnated with antibiotic is another measure of antibiotic activity. Inhibitors of cell wall synthesis. One major class of antibiotics inhibits the synthesis of peptidoglycan. One cell wall synthesis involving penicillin binding proteins is inhibited enzymatic autolysis of the cell wall can occur. Without the restraining influence of the cell with the high osmotic pressure inside the cell, bursts the inner and outer membranes of the bacteria. Therefore, these antibiotics are generally bactericidal, which means they kill the bacteria. Looking at the several me mechanisms that are involved in inhibition of peptidoglycan synthesis, there is root 1, which is a terminal 2 amino acid of a peptide chain of peptidoglycan or unusual amino acids, D-alanine, as, as opposed to its isomer L-alanine. The antibiotic psilocerine is an analogue of D-alanine and interferes with enzymatic conversion of L-alanine to D-alanine in cytoplasm. Therefore, subsequent synthesis of peptidoglycan cannot occur. With regards to root 2, the peptidoglycan subunit containing one side chain and attached pe peptide to be used in cross bridge formation is passed along the cytoplasmic membrane attached to the under capronal diphosphate. After the nascent peptidoglycan mon monomer leaves the carrier or reaches its cell wall, the undercaprenal diphosphate is dephosphorylated to its monophosphate form. Bacitration inhibits the de dephosphorylation reaction, and in the absence of monophosphorylated carrier peptidoglycan subunits, synthesis stops. The, as the final step in peptidoglycan synthesis involves linking the sugar portion of the peptidoglycan subunit to the glycan backbone of the existing cell wall polymer. Cross-linking of the peptide portion of the subunit to a peptide in the cell wall then occurs. During this process, D-alanine is enzymatically excised from the end of a pre-existing peptide side chain, allowing it to be cross-linked by a new peptide bond to the recently synthesized peptidoglycan subunit. For example, vancomycin binds to D-alanine, D-alanine, thus sterilely inhibiting transpeptidation, known as cross-linking. Oh, the beta-lactam antibiotics include penicillins such as ampicillin, cephalosporins, and mon monobactams. These bind to inhibit enzymes, penicillin binding proteins involved in the transpeptidation cross-linking of peptidoglycan. These antibiotics have in common the four-membered lactam ring. Attached to the lactam, penicillins have an additional five-membered ring and cephalosporins is a six-membered ring. Monobactams consist of the lactam ring alone and display antibiotic activity. Penicillin, this is made by the mold penicillin chrysogenum. During fermentation, the mold forms six amino penicillic acid, which has a thiazolidine ring and a beta lactam ring fused together. This, however, is acid labile and subject to degradation by bacterial enzymes. Most stable derivatives are made biochemically so that, in addition to increased stability, they are better absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and have a wider spectrum of bacterial effects. Various chemical side chains have been synthetically linked to the ring structures, producing a host of antibiotics with different properties in the host. Many penicillins display little activity against gram-negative bacteria since they do not penetrate the outer membrane. Cephalosporins and other newer penicillins are active against gram-negative bacteria since they can penetrate the outer membrane. 
Other chemically modified penicillins have lower elimination rates from the patient decreasing the frequency or administration of these drugs. Penicillins can be destroyed by beta-lactamase penicillinase produced by resistant bacterial strains. Clavulanic acid also has a beta-lactam component which binds strongly to beta-lactamases inhibiting their activity. It is used in conjunction with certain penicillins allowing their use against otherwise resistant bacteria. Another form of resistance involves a change in the structure of penicillin binding proteins such that the antibiotic does not bind efficiently. In the case of gram-negative bacteria, penicillins pass across the outer membrane using porins. Resistance may develop from mutations leading to modified porins. Let's have a look at polymyx polymyxin B. This binds to the lipid A portion of lipopolysaccharide and also phospholipids. However, it binds preferentially to lipid A. This disrupts the outer membrane of, outer membrane of gram negative bacteria. Since the cell membrane is not exposed in gram positive bacteria, polymycin has little activity against them. This drug is toxic to human cells since it can also lyse eukaryotic membranes. This explains its limited clinical use. Another antibiotic we want to look at today is vancomycin. So, this is a last resort drug against gram positive bacteria. It is a glycopeptide made by an Acinobacter species. Vancomycin resistance has arisen, making this antibiotic less useful. It is very hydrophilic and forms hydrogen bonds of terminal D-alanyl D-alanine moieties of the NAM NEG subunits and stops polymerization of the subunits to form long chains. It also prevents polymer cross-linking. Vancomycin use is often replaced by daptomycin. Daptomycin is a natural lipopeptide that is used to treat multi-resistant gram-positive bacterial infections. It is a natural product made by the soil fungus Streptomyces roseaporis. The lipid portion of the molecule binds to the cell membrane, resulting in depolarization, loss of membrane potential, and it can be used to treat enterococci, including glycopeptide resistant enterococci GRE, staphylococci, including methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus, streptococci, and corn bacteria. It is used in the United States against gram positive stent infections. Staphylococcus aureus bacteremia and right sided Staphylococcus aureus endocarditis. Daptomycin cannot be used to treat pneumonia because it binds to pulmonary surfactant. Daptomycin can also cause life threatening eosinophilic pneumonia in people over 60 years old. Here the final antibiotic is bacitracin, which is a cyclic polypeptide produced by Bacillus subtilis. It is used topically against gram positive bacterial eye and skin infections but is not used systematically. So remember, topically means on skin surfaces. Bacitracin inhibits dephosphorylation of C5 isoprenyl pyrophosphate, which transports peptidyl glycan components bacterial cells outside the inner membrane. That's the end of today's video. The next one will be on treatment of antiviral chemotherapy. And then following that, we'll be looking at antigens and antibodies and their different responses, etc. Thanks very much for tuning in today. Thank you. Bye bye.